Hey, what's going on everybody? Got another knife here for you. Uh, this one has been a long time coming. Uh, I actually had originally got it uh, several weeks back and um, had to send it back uh, for some uh, quick adjustments and then just got it back today. This is the Will Moon Mark 7 or MK7. Try to get that to focus here. Uh, this is from his very first run. He originally did, I think it was 12 pieces or 10 pieces or something to that extent that he had online. You had to get online and um, order it right then at a certain time and I was uh, luckily able to do that. And so this is the very first uh, generation. Give you a look at the blade here. Now there's going to be some storytelling in this video and there will probably be storytelling in another video when I get my next knife from him as well, which should be pretty shortly in the next few weeks. Um, and also because there's been a lot of stuff in general with custom knife makers going on on YouTube, Instagram, the forums, um, everything else. And I'm going to, I try to keep my stuff as factual and as direct when I discuss it as possible. And also uh, I'm relatively in regards to service and communication. I'm a very uh, patient person. Uh, maybe in other aspects of my life, I'm not so patient, uh, if you ask my wife or something like that. But I believe that I've been very courteous and patient with every uh, knife person that I've ever worked with. So I'm going to talk to you and pretty much let you look at the knife while I do it. And then we'll get into maybe some more details as far as specifics of this knife. This knife I ordered back, I believe it was the first week of October when uh, Will had put these out. Uh, I was actually number seven, it looked like, in regards to when mine should be in the rotation to get done. It actually, I believe, was number 12 or so after, because I think he had some pieces that he originally made from some people like pre-sale wise, and then also um, maybe started doing them a little bit out of order in regards to what materials he had or things he was doing on them. Um, there were additional options on the knife, so the standard MK7, if you ordered it with no frills, would have just been a plain titanium base. I believe no inlays at all. Um, a single blade finish, uh, meaning no two-tone, which I believe was either a blasted finish or stonewash finish. Um, and it, I'm, I think the titanium clips were included, I'm not positive on that. Now the additional options were, and the ones that I took advantage of, was um, going with the micarta inlays. And I really thought it was cool because it's red micarta. And I really haven't seen that much red micarta out there. And then I had him do a satin finish on the titanium and anodize it blue. And then I asked for the American Tonto style blade. And I asked to have it a uh, acid stone wash on the bevels and the satins on the flats. And right there you can make out uh, Will Moon's signature on the knife. Now, from that point, it was originally supposed to be 8 to 12 weeks delivery. Um, as with pretty much almost all custom knife makers, it took much longer. And I expected that. Uh, however, it took almost uh, twice as long, about 24 weeks close to it. I think I got this in March originally, um, towards the end of March. And it came, and it looked good. And it felt good, and then I was going to flip it open, and there was a lot of, a lot of tension to pop it open. A lot more than I thought, especially when I've seen some of his other videos. And after a few flips, <clears throat> uh, it broke. What happened was um, something with the detent ball went wrong. The detent ball came out, uh, and it went way off track. I contacted Will, sent it in. He said he'd fix it, um, and he did. And it took a little while to get back. Now, in the meantime, uh, I've had an MK6 on order from him since last April. And there's been several delays with that. Uh, in regards to it, though, he has communicated back and forth with me. And I have never been rude. I've never um, sent any kind of nastiness in the emails. And uh, each email was just you know, Will looking for an update or Will just seeing where you are with the status on it. And for a lot of you guys, you know that um, Will Moon uh, for the last, you know, several years has been doing knife making but also been in school um, working with his uh, 
family's company as well. I think they do, you know, robotic fighting or something of that nature. And uh, he's also, you know, a younger person in the, as far as uh, a business person, someone running his own business and doing everything. So he's had to uh, learn things on the go. Now I come from a business. I'm, a, I'm in sales and I'm in a company that uh, prides itself on uh, efficiency, quickness, uh, quick delivery and quality products and, and excellent customer service. So obviously when you get into custom knife making, you're ordering things where you're on a wait list and then it takes a while for it to get made and uh, everything that goes on in the knife maker's life affects their business directly. Like it's hard for them to separate personal life and knife making. I know that there's been some things about Will, uh, both on forums and things like that where he's either been late or delayed on getting products done or had t had trouble getting back to people on emails quickly. I know he doesn't really post his phone number out, which uh, um, maybe is a little different from most other knife makers. Um, so it's really the only way to reach him is through email. And I think at a certain times his email was changing from when he uh, changed his website over and everything. Either way, um, there were times where there was a gap and I didn't hear from Will for a while, and I had to send a second or third email, but eventually he did get back to me. And then when I did have the issue with this, he responded right back to my email and told me to send it in, um, and then he get it turned around right away. Now, right away is a term that obviously is uh, different interpretations. Right away to me means in a week. You know, you get it, he fixes whatever the issue is and gets it right back. Now, it took... Uh, well over a month because obviously I was March and now we're in May and I just got it back today But in the meantime, I also did want to find out what was going on with my MK6 Which when I had first ordered with him in April was supposed to be three to four months And then it was supposed to be ready by the end of the summer and then he didn't have any more blades left So he thought maybe October then he started this MK7 project and that delayed everything else um, and then it got to the winter and then I had ordered this, hoping that maybe if I had ordered this, wanted to order this in October, that maybe he could do both and get my other one finished same time. Either way, my MK7 is supposedly supposed to be done in the next, my MK6, or rather, is supposed to be supposedly done in the next two or three weeks, and, uh, and that's that. Now, <laughs> I'm trying to keep things in order and, and between the two knives and the differences. Um, that might infuriate some people, have, ordering a knife and having it be delayed as, as long as it has been, and also paying for the knife too. That's the other thing that I, I also forgot to mention, that Will pretty much has you pay up front for the knives. Not necessarily in the beginning when he was doing the MK6s, uh, but when he did do these, you had to pay up front for it, and he gave you the expected timeline and, and everything, and then it was supposed to be delivered to you, obviously, in, in perfect working condition. Uh, the MK6s, I'm not sure how he had done those in the past, but I know for me, when he thought he was going to get them done soon, which was the end of the summer, um, he said, sure, go ahead, send the payment, which I did, and then obviously since then I had... The other issue is that he never really reached out um, for, with any updates uh, proactively. It was always me having to check it out, uh, you know, follow up, see what's going on. And there's nothing that I'm saying that I think Will would disagree with or feel that I'm saying um, negatively. I'm just giving a factual... Um, event by event basis. The thing that really made things more positive for me is that when I did have the issue with this and I sent it in and a week or two had gone by and I hadn't heard anything back or I had gotten an email back to be right away and then I got another email back being that oh things have come up, school's gotten crazy, um, some other issues as far as personal issues that he did relate to me which I'm not going to relate to you guys uh, came up and I just said um, I, d I decided on my part that I would reach out to him in a, in a very polite but firm email um, asking that he actually call me just so we can talk person to person, man to man. Um, I know a phrase that, that Will's always posted on some of his things is that obviously, you know, we don't need, know each other from Adam. If it's someone randomly posting in a forum or you're, or you're emailing back and forth, sometimes things get lost in translation when it's written. But at least when you talk on the phone, you can uh, explain and go back and forth. So I, I just asked that he give me a call to discuss both knives, both this one that I had to send back for the repair and the MK6 that I've had on order for close, well, over a year now. Uh, and he did. He, I put my number in and I literally got a call that within an hour or two of it. And we spoke on the phone for a good 45 minutes. Well more than uh, after we had figured everything out, well past that. Just having a, a conversation between uh, two people that 
Uh, obviously love knives, uh, know a decent amount about it. Uh, we discussed everything from blade steels to uh, design to materials, um, just in general to how he was doing um, and uh, what I would like done on the MK6 because he was open to changing anything. He, he apologized for the delay. Uh, he allowed me to see if I wanted to do anything different from what I had originally discussed with him because a year had passed. And obviously now I've picked up different knives, different ideas, and um, maybe there's something else I'd like to change and, and do differently. It was a very nice conversation. Um, he definitely understood my frustrations. He uh, appreciated my patience. And he uh, said to give him a call anytime on the phone. He gave me his number, obviously, uh, or to text him. And uh, it, things have been going smooth since then. I got this knife then a, a couple weeks after that, and he's already sent me updates on the next one. Where I'm going with this, and I'm at 10 minutes, I apologize, guys. I want to make it about the knife, but I did want to explain my experience as well because I've had other experiences with other custom knife makers, too, where there can be a delay with communication or uh, time frames. And even when, and especially when money becomes involved, it obviously is a very uh, big issue. But I tried to be as polite and understanding as possible, but also was firm. And when things started to get past the extreme, at least for what my taste was as far as um, delays or issues, I just asked I speak to him directly. We did. We figured everything out. Uh, he's actually doing a really nice thing for me on the MK6 um, because obviously since it was a year ago that I ordered it, he's worked with different materials and done different things. And so I asked, could he do these? He's not charging me any extra for them, um, which obviously I, I would think is a customer service thing that you would go ahead and do. But maybe some knife makers wouldn't. You know, maybe they say, oh, you know what? I will get it done for you. I'm sorry it took so long, but whatever you order is whatever you ordered. I can't change it for you. And he's doing that. We'll see when I get the MK6, obviously, if it does turn out to what we did discuss. Uh, but overall, um, this came back in perfect working order. So I just wanted to give you that as my experience, what happened, how I handled it. Um, I didn't want to lash out in the public forums. I didn't want to put some crazy messages on Instagram. Um, I tried not to message him through that in any public way saying, you know, because I understand when you're a knife collector and you see a maker that you've been on the list for a long time putting out knife after knife, you're like, when is my knife coming up? Or did that guy skip me? Or that looks like the materials I asked for. Why is it going on this knife before my knife? Um, I get that, and that's why I wanted to talk to Will directly, and we hashed all that out. And uh, this knife now is in proper working order. Just to go let you guys know what the issue was, um, obviously I said that the D10 ball had come off and it kind of came off track. With these first generation MK7s, uh, and this is probably goes for any knife maker, there's always going to be certain things that when you first make the prototype and then you get to make one or two that looks like it's good, and then as production goes on, you'll find things that didn't, add up just right. One thing is that the way that the lock bar is done and the blade lines up, and Will could explain this further if he ever wanted to, but there's something about how it um, isn't perfectly set up. So you can see when it's closed, it's not dead center. You know, it's slightly off to the right. It's not rubbing. You can see that there is uh, space, air right there between, but it's slightly off center. That was one thing um, that led to the problem, and that's just based on his original design of the CNCing work of the frames and something about an apex or a convex part of the lock bar against the blade or how it is with the bearings in here that there's no way to actually center these. So the first few MK7s were slightly off center. He's since corrected that, so if you get a second generation MK7, it should be pretty much dead center. But then the other issue too, and the reason that the knife fell apart as far as the blade rolling on the detent and everything was that um, there was a burr underneath where the detent ball was pressed in. So the detent ball was not actually set perfectly. That's why when I said I originally was having a lot of trouble opening it, you know, pushing pressure on it, was because the ball was actually farther out than it should be, putting excess pressure on the blade and actually making it go further off center uh, when I originally got it. Uh, Will, obviously, when he got in, took it apart, saw that, took the burr out, um, refit it, and now you can see uh, it works very well. It's actually a, an extremely nice flipper, and I'll, now that we're at 14 minutes, I'm sorry, I'll get to the actual knife. <laughs> um, it's, it's a nice weight. 
this uh, inlay work with the micarta and the black G10 dots uh, is flush, um, very smooth. I actually was surprised. I thought there would be some like catchiness or grippiness to it, but it's actually just perfectly smooth. Uh, very hard to feel any kind of edge or lip. The flipping action now is terrific, and it's probably the best light switch opening knife I've ever had. You can see how perfectly he's done the nice lip on here and you pretty much just put your finger right there and just pull back and it opens very nicely. Now you can push button this. I don't really see a need to um, but if you did push button it you can see it flies out very well. Um, it's a very nice satin finish. I love the clip on here. I actually like these two little screws and how it's just flat. Um, a nice 3D milled clip. Also if you look on the inside I think on this side uh, Will's signature is in there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not. Uh, see right there on the right side. His signature is there. He did this orange peel finish on the edges or on the back spine, which I think is really nice. He did this nice mirror polish on the back spacer, and you can see in the little groove, the milled out areas, it's almost like a rainbow look in there. So you have some really nice different finishes on here. Uh, the orange peel, the satin finish on here, satin finish on here. He has the extended over travel bar. I don't know if you can see it. See right there. It's actually CNC'd into the lock bar, so it's all one piece. So you can't overextend this, and you'll see here. So it's really cool. There's very little travel in the lock bar. You can see it's locked up now. And then you disengage it, and that's as far as you can go because of where the piece is and you can see it just drops in. Let me wide this out a little bit. The other thing too is the D10 is set so far back that really when you go to close this there's no sucking in of it because it has to be so far in before it catches it. There you go, you can see how it sucked it in. And it's almost impossible to open this now without it opening all the way. You almost can't not flip it all the way open. But it's very interesting. It's not the loud sounding click, but it's definitely a strong detent because it's not, there's no way it's coming out and you can feel the, the break very easily when you open it, you know. Um, but yeah, the backspacer is put on nice. You have the mirror polish, you have the orange peel, you have the satin, you have the micarta. This is CPM 154, it's his preferred steel. I know he has used S30V or S35VN, I think, in the past, but this is 154, uh, or CPM 154. The edge uh, has a nice close to mirror finish on it. Uh, I think he did an excellent job with the two-tone finish. He's rounded the spine. It's not the thickest blade in the world, but it does it does have some uh, thickness to it. The jimping right here is done very well, and it feels nice in the hand. You know, it's a, I believe this is a three and a half inch blade. Um, the handle's a little bit longer. The only things I would suggest doing differently, and this is just my personal preference, is I think he left a little too much space here at the end of the uh, of the handles. You can see that he could have made the blade a little bit longer. And I don't think that would be, it made me make like a 3.6, 3.65 inch blade uh, because he has the room there. And it does look fine as far as the ratio, but I think it does look, it could be a little bit longer. I do like when the blade takes up the entire handle and there is no catch. I mean, it, it's not like this piece was out here and you're, this, this backspacer wasn't here like it was a uh, pillar design and you could catch your finger if it was too close. It's, it's sitting nicely in there. Um, just a very simple, elegant piece, uh, and also the other thing that I liked is how he put the piece of, I don't know if this is micarta, or if this is maybe G10, or some kind of clear C-Tech, because you can see it almost looks translucent in there. Uh, maybe it's a piece of, it doesn't glow, I don't think. Mm, yeah, I don't think so. But just another nice touch on the flipper. So, very cool. Give you a little comparison in size. Or actually, you know what? Show you the size here. Here's a ruler. So you can see the blade is right three and a half, uh, three and a half inches, three point five inches. The overall length is just over eight. Um, and so you can see here. 
I move it like this, guys, because there's little stuff on my camera that's in the way, like it says, like the date and time recording. So about four and a half, close to five inches on the handle. And then here's it compared to a very similar looking knife with the Quake in the way that this is, uh, you know, such a slim line design. That's my Boker Quaken. Almost the exact same size, really. Um, open that up. You can see the thing with this is it's great in the pocket. You know, I mean, it slides in very easily. You have a lot of blade, at least length available, and usability with the Tonto. Um, the other thing, too, is when we're talking about knives that are really easy to do light switch openings on versus having to push button or preload, I would always bring up the ZT0801 because this one is the same thing. You just pull back on it. You don't need to ever push button this. And give you an example as far as size compared to that. So that's that. Just give you well, keep bumping the camera. I'm sorry, guys. Just give you a speed kind of thing. Here, I'll really do a quick pullback on this one. I'll do a nice pullback on this one, and then you can see how this one sounds and and opens as far as speed goes. I think pretty nice, pretty well done. It's not an inexpensive knife. It is expensive, especially with all the options. Every option costs, you know, additional amount of money. Um, and these were more expensive than the MK6s were. The other thing is we'll check out the cutting ability on it, and then we'll wrap it up, and I'll put some more information on when I get the MK6 in, hopefully. So, that's just a look at the cutting ability, uh, and I hope that I didn't bore you guys too much to death, but I did want to kind of just go over all of that. Obviously, I get frustrated, and I can get um, annoyed, and there are things in customer service-wise that, you know, can be just wrong, but I think that if you and we as buyers are do our best to be polite, cordial, understanding, but firm, uh, things will get done and taken care of before you ever have to go a public route um, or say things that maybe uh, you don't know everything that's going on in their life is happening. And as much as I try to keep my life away from my business, I know if some kind of major disaster or family thing happened, um, it would affect my work to an, to an extent. And as long as that's explained correctly and handled properly and any kind of... Um, additions or or helpful things to be done can be done about it I think that that uh, goes a long way so that's my rant and that's the uh, review on the MK6 uh, when I or MK, MK7 I'm sorry and when I get the MK6 in I'll do a review on that and maybe expound on this in case there were any questions or comments that popped up off of this video so thanks a lot guys and have a good day or good night peace